Welcome back to the piano studio of Lisa Bailey. We are continuing our series on the circle of fifths. In the last video, we worked on the C5 finger scale and learned about whole steps and half steps and what the pattern of a five finger scale is made up of. Now, we're gonna start diving a little more into the circle of fifths. Our next scale is the G scale. So I'm going to show you how we know that G is next. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. So hang tight. So we're gonna start working on our G5 finger scale, but let's, let's review first what we worked on last week. So last week we started working on the C5 finger scale and we learned about whole steps and half steps. So let's review that real quick. So a half step is from one note to the very next note, whether it's to a black key or a white key. So here's a half step example that are two white keys together. Now a whole step, remember, is two half steps together. So here's a half step. And then from here to here is another half step. So our pattern for a five finger scale is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Now for every major five finger scale, that is gonna be the pattern. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. So then we can create all kinds of five fingers patterns like that. Now I wanna note something, five finger patterns are called a couple different things. They're called five finger scales sometimes, and they're also called penta scales. Penta means five. So if you hear some different terms that I may say, or you might see it differently in your book, they all mean the same thing. Five finger scale, five finger pattern, and penta scale all mean the same thing. So now let's look at the circle of fifths. Let's let's talk about the circle of fifths a little bit. So we did C five finger scale last week. Now, if you notice, this spans five notes and from note one, which is C up to G is the interval of a fifth. Now an interval is the distance between two notes. So we could have an interval of a second, because that's only two notes. We could have an interval of a third, because we go one, two, three. So that's a third. So the next one, of course, would be a fourth. And the one we're gonna work on mostly today is a fifth. Now this is important because we are working on the circle of fifths, which means each time we change to a different five finger scale, we're going to be moving a fifth up. So we're going from C to G. That is the interval of a fifth. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our right hand and put our thumb where our pinky was. And now we're going to do the five finger pattern, but we're gonna look at our whole steps and half steps first so we make sure we do it. Remember the pattern is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. So here we go. Whole step, whole step, and then we have our half step, and then whole step. Look at that, so here we go. That is your G five finger scale for your right hand. Now your left hand, remember we started on C last week and your pinky is on C. So our interval of a fifth in the left hand is the same as the right hand from C to G. So now we take our pinky, our finger five, and move it to where our finger one is right now, which is G. So now we're in the G five finger pattern or G five finger scale. So let's find our whole steps and half steps. So here's a half step and then our whole step, half step, whole step, half step, 
and then this one's awkward <laughs> our whole step so whole step whole step half step whole step all right so let me play this for you now the left hand I want you to get very comfortable with playing each of those hands separately. So one hand at a time. Do that for most of your practicing when you work on your five finger scales. When you are ready, you can try them hands together. So here we go. to do it in contrary motion which means we're moving in opposite directions so we're going to start with our finger one and move in the opposite direction I really like the way that sounds I think that's my favorite way to play the five finger scales now keep in mind, we talked about this last week, that your fingers are not gonna be way down here on the ends and they're not gonna be way in here on the inside the black keys. They're going to be comfortably on the wide part of the white keys. Our thumbs lay on their side and our pinkies play on its side. So make sure that your fingers are in that correct spot before you even start playing, okay? Another thing to do is, if you notice when I play, I keep my fingers on the keys. I don't lift them way up here and make them dance all over the place. I keep them close to the keys. And I have a nice curved hand shape and I play on my fingertips. So we don't wanna play in flat fingers because that makes it really awkward and hard to get our pinky and our thumb. So if we have curved fingers, our pinky and our thumb are right in line with the rest of our fingers. As you play, remember, firm fingertips. Good, so practice that for a few minutes and you can pause the video if you want and when you're ready, we will move on to the improvisation in the G5 finger scale. Our improvisation is of course going to be in the key of G, so the G5 finger scale. Now what I would like you to do is the same thing we did last week with the C5 finger scale and that is to try out different Improvisation, remember improvisation is making up music on the spot. We're not practicing it, but we can play around with it and see what patterns we might like. Maybe you want to skip some notes or do a big jump. Or maybe you wanna hold notes for a long time. Try out a few things and see what you like. And when you're ready, come back to the video. Okay, so for the accompaniment, I'm going to count us in. You can use your right hand or your left hand. Let's do one hand at a time to start. After you've gotten really good at it, you can try hands together. It might sound kind of cool. All right, so I will count us in. Here we go. One, two, three, four.
Now for this improvisation, I'm actually gonna give you a bonus improvisation. I'm going to do the same accompaniment, but I'm gonna speed it up. That way, if you want to play long notes, there's a little more interesting sounding things in the background, or you can also play fast notes if you want to, and you can do that with either accompaniment. But let's do this accompaniment a second time and do it faster. So here we go, I'm gonna count us in. One, two, three, four. that faster. What do you think? Did you enjoy playing that with me? That was so fun and interesting. So I am excited to hear how this goes for you. I would love to receive a comment or a question from you if there's anything that you would like to say to me. And um, I'm going to start working on the next video so that we can move into the D major five finger scale which is very exciting because we start using black keys. I'll see you then.